Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Carbonite Bounty BS uh, with me and the nerds here once again. So, uh, how's everybody doing this week? Good, man. Good. Good. Hey, how you doing, man? Good, man. Doing great. Doing great. Well, uh, you know, this is our first part or part one of season two um, of the Clone Wars animated series. Um, I really enjoyed these first couple episodes. I, I mean, it's a definitely you can see the, um, you know, the evolution of the series from, you know, a small time. I believe it was less than a year between the two, season one and season two. But uh, big, big, you know, changes as far as animation, I thought, uh, storytelling, um, you know. And we'll, we'll get into that, obviously, as our, you know, review of this uh, part one of the season one, or season two. So uh, before we get all that started, um, DP, why don't you let everybody know where they can find us? They don't already know. Nerdcyclopedia.com, people. Make sure that you're going on to our site where you are finding the links to all our um, social media outlet and platforms on Twitter, on Facebook, and also on Instagram at Nerdcyclopedia. We're also on YouTube if you're watching us right now. Uh, make sure that you are clicking that notification so anytime that we're on, you know that we're on. Make sure you also click that subscribe button at the top right there so um, you can get our content as we keep you know putting it out there. Also, make sure that you are subscribing to all of our pod, um, our podcasts on all your favorite um platforms um apple podcasts uh google play spotify iHeartRadio, tune in anywhere that you list stitcher anywhere that you listen to your favorite podcast we are there and also make sure that you are giving us some feedback we have our fa good great facebook um group called carbonate bonnie bs a star wars um facebook group so make sure that you search and you know find that and join us you know we love to you know get your feedback and get conversation also make sure that you are leaving us direct feedback at nerds at nerdcyclopedia.com. Appreciate it, guys. And uh, before we uh, kind of jump in, uh, we'll just do a quick uh, round table around as far as uh, our first thoughts on the episode. And we'll start with uh, Kendo this week. What did you think about the first, uh, you know, part one of season season two so far? Uh, well, I, I think that they've definitely taken a step up. This season is much better than the uh, the first one. Uh, better, better action, more... Uh, better storyline i really dig the uh getting to see angry anakin like a lot mm -hmm. really developing that and seeing where he i mean there was a lot of vader moments in the in this in the, just these couple episodes and i did watch the grievous one because uh, not nine i know we were going to eight but i watched not, i watched nine Ooh. i wanted to see grievous back in there and he, he makes a he makes a splash but um I, like I said, I like the uh, the angry Anakin getting to see a little bit of that more Jedi introduction, uh, uh, Coyote Mundy a little bit more with him and some of the other Jedi too. So that, uh, yeah, I, I'm enjoying this. I think this is going to be a better season than the first one for sure. Yeah, definitely. Uh, what do you think about a hitch? You know, for me, it was really a step up. Like, uh, I agree with uh, Ken, for sure. It was a real step up from season one. I liked the general, like the general animation seems to be better. The action seems to be a little bit more complicated and thus more interesting. Um, I think the the villains of this piece are a, a lot better now. I think Cad Bane is a really excellent villain. I think the mm -hmm. idea of, you know, Star Wars exploring these genre things. I think this is something I brought up when we talked about the Mandalorian that I wanted to see them branch off into more genres. And then my problem was that they'd already done it and I was too lazy to watch. Blech. <laughs> i mean who could believe that i would be lazy right don't don't uh any of my teachers right um anyway 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 so i really enjoyed it a lot i thought uh you know we're seeing a lot more of ahsoka and we're seeing a lot more character development um in the periphery too uh, a lot of stuff from season one's paying off too all of the shorthand for giving me caring about the clones is being is paying off constantly especially as we see them being you know, taken over by this worm zombie thing, whatever that's going on. The queen, oh, man, the Geonosian yeah. queen. That's a the, that that whole that whole uh, that whole. Do you think it goes through the nose or through the ear thing? Had me cracking up too. By the way, I thought that was a really great <laughs> a really great bit of banner. But for me, you know, season two is is a big step up from season one. In fact, you know, I, I it's it's the first time I'm actually very excited that we're doing this media instead of just for the other stuff I'm getting, like the other enrichment st stuff I'm getting for the other things I've watched. So now I'm actually enjoying the show. I think it's good. It's going good. Definitely. Appreciate it. What do you think DP? 
Cad Bane. Somebody, you know, gets a great shout out. Oh, who who names these characters? Who names who comes up with do they put it like on a spinner or something like that? And you know, put one uh, um, name to, together with another name and then just, you know, smash them together. Cad Bane. Like how do, who who does that? I mean, that's a really dope name right there. Um, shout outs to whoever, you know, comes up with those. He has a really great look. The animation, like you guys were saying, is, you know, definitely stepped up. Um, I was really impressed with episode five. That was the episode where it had like the most action where I think it was like from end to end. It was like a straight up war yeah. going on. You know, um, it was I, I think I was just texting you guys. I mean, it's amazing how Anakin can go through and can lead his army right through a, you know, a whole a, a squad of um, um, battle battle droids and not get hit. You know, I mean, he's just that good. I mean, we're talking about Anakin style, you know, Skywalker here. Um, but yeah, that that I was most impressed. One scene that I just kept going back and forth with um, is when they blew up the tower and how uh, not realistic because it's all animation, but the effects of it was really good. It was really good during that episode, so I was very impressed with that. And um, they had the um, the 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 dust and everything, you know, just take out, you know, a lot of the um, the um, the clones and stuff, you know, if I'm remembering right. Um, so yeah, I really love that the um, the the zombie. I mean, not the zombie, but the yeah, the zombie type, you know, episode where the 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 what do we call it? Um, hitch the um, thing of going through their nose and stuff. Oh, the worms. worms. Yeah, the worms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought that was pretty good. Um, the Anakin is getting his fear. Padme is bringing out a lot of Anakin's fear, you know. Um, so he's with the, with the emotional attachment that he has with um, Padme is bringing out these Darth, you know, Vader moments, you know, for him. So it's really interesting to see how that is just slowly developing. You know, he still has his. Um, he's he's a very focused person. Um, but, you know, he, he loves just going off on his own and not, you know, really listening to anything um, or not not really listening to anything, but just just doing his own thing, um, which he sort of like teaches Ahsoka to do, you know, because she does her own thing, you know, at some point, not always listening to Anakin, just as Anakin doesn't always listen to Obi-Wan's, you know, advice and stuff. Um I, I, I like this so far. I mean, you know, everything is just a step up from season one so far. Yeah, I mean, and, and to further uh, what you're saying, I mean, it's, to me, my, my initial thoughts are just the consistency of everything. I mean, you know, kind of like Hitch, I mean, when I, when, when this came out, I, I just looked at it, even Ken said it, I was like, man, I'm not watching this. It wasn't until a couple years ago I actually gave it any bit of an attention, but I mean, to see these stories, you know, and these characters that you would hear about in Legends, and whether it's Legends or Canon or whatever you think about it, the EU the he they hear these stories and see how closely they really tied in to the you know prequel sequel trilogy and the original um sequel itself it's really astonishing this once again it's just it's we keep saying it but it's just great story writing i mean this stuff fits in that you would feel like would never be listed as at the time expanded universe or you know non-canon content i mean these characters i mean even the planets and this is something we'll get into when we're discussing some of the things but you know Ilum, the, the place of the, the where a Jedi originated selecting their lightsaber crystal as a you know Padawan as a youngling to then go on and build a lightsaber. You know those are things that we heard about in the expanded universe of video games that have been brought to reality in the series. And to me, like that's my my everlasting thing are these places and these things you heard of that are myths or you would see on a video game that really wasn't listed as canon that you can visually see now and kind of get attachment to. So that's that's my part is the start of these, you know, first couple episodes already is just, it's excellent to me. I think that one thing that to, I know that DP, you were talking about episode five and the action being like, so, so intense. And one thing I appreciated about it was it really brought the scope of what this battle felt like in a way that isn't really present anywhere else, except in episode two, where you see the real scope right. of what's going on. And by sort of using Geonosis, as a background, I think it almost enabled them. I hope they were reusing properties from episode two or so reusing some of that stuff so they didn't have to go out of bounds and they could really focus on putting together a tight action driven storyline that in some ways is a lot like, you know, the Star Wars version of Saving Private Ryan, right? Things go wrong. Stuff 
all Braves. the time. All they have to the do this commando yeah. raid that's crazy, you know? Uh, th- this is, it's just excellent. And it was the one of the first times when I've been watching this series that I sort of felt myself inching forward, you know? Sitting on, only needing the edge of my seat. And that is, <laughs> <laughs> that's something that, you know, you know, usually in the home, uh, you know, you don't have to pay for the whole seat. You don't pay for anything. Uh, but I only needed the edge tonight, uh, or when I was watching episode five. I thought that whole the way they are sort of working these story arcs into place, right? They have, you know, we have Geonosis, we have some stuff going on in the Senate, and they're keeping them kind of separated enough that you can follow the one big story, while at the same time following all the little stories. And I'm really appreciating how they're they're really you know fleshing out the background of the Clone Wars. Yeah. They're... The writing was really, really smooth, uh, too. I really dug the, uh, the, the. I didn't know there was a there was a Geonosian queen. I mean, how cool was that? And then yeah. it, then it made sense. Poggle the lesser, so he's actually lesser than she is. I thought he was in charge, but it didn't. And now it like makes sense. And he wasn't even he wasn't even a leader. He was a uh, what did she call him? He she was just a uh, advisor, right? right? And, yeah. and she was actually controlled with the worm. She was controlling dead Geonosians, like uh, goats. Uh, I mean, there was some weird, weird stuff <laughs> going on in that whole that whole sequence. It was uh, it was really that I I I don't know. They, they'll be able to like develop that a little bit more. I'd like to know a little bit more about that that vibe. That was like dark arts. There it was uh, it was pretty cool. And did you know when the worm went up into the person's skull, you heard that crack. Like what was that? Oh man! Yeah, it, <laughs> when it when it when it went up. Uh, was, now was that uh, uh, the one clone? The the first guy went up. Was that that was uh, Captain Rex? Right? Was that Rex? No. I don't. No. Was that no. Rex? That no, wasn't no, Rex. No. no, no. no. I mean, he, Rex Rex is bald. I mean, and, and yeah, he was bald, but he that, had that, that tattoo. The one that marked him as the guy that had the thing go up his nose. That's what that meant, right? Yeah. When, yeah, it went up his nose, and then you heard this. Yeah. <laughs> Crack! Like what? Ugh. What was that? That was nice. amazing. Sickening. Like, <laughs> crack. Oh. There's a lot of that. Like, there's a lot more like um, consequences in this TV show than I thought there was going to be. There's like this stakes. 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 Exactly, DP. The stakes. We talk. I talked a lot about this in season one about making the clones all three dimensional and using shorthand for that. So I believe they're all three dimensional now. You don't have to prove it to me every single time. Uh, I, I think that introducing these weird elements in the Star Wars universe, like this zombie story, this horror story that just, just sort of dropped in the middle here at the end of a long campaign that starts out with this incredible action sequence, right? I mean, it ends with this the, the zombie insect queen trying to take over, you know, take over <laughs> this medical frigate, and it's so wild. I mean, we have we have these these Padawans also being made to make these moral decisions because you know because yeah. they're built on that that uh, foundation of I believe all the clones are third dimensional. I believe they're all real. And now, whether or not to kill an infected clone becomes a big decision for our Padawans. Yeah, yeah. and I like that episode. <laughs> and it makes you think at the end of the episode, right? At the end of the episode, when you know it's proven that the cold saved, like these people could be saved, right? It makes you think like they murdered, <laughs> they murdered a lot of clones. A lot of clones mm-hmm. died in this process. So it's not like, you know, one criticism I heard a lot about episode four was that, ah, it's just like 10 soldiers, right? Are they robots or are they not? Like there's no sort of cost. There's no stakes for these, these, right. these actors. And then Luke blows them all up. Well, the Clone Wars is really addressing that to the point where they're, they're getting me to almost feel sorry for the, the droids a little bit, a little bit, not a lot. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Droids have like a little bit of personality. Like like I was saying in like previous episode, I, I love the way they banter between each other, you know, and how they just react to certain things on the um battlefield. Um, Is that one? Yeah, that one where they, they said, um, we're gonna lose. Like he, <laughs> the joy just like goes, oh, <laughs> and then it concuts him. You know what the other the other line was? I wonder if anyone had a count. How many times have we heard? I've got a bad feeling about this. <laughs> right. Like just in these eight episodes, I think it's like eight times, and okay. everybody said it. Yeah. Like Anakin said it. Obi Wan said. Obi Wan said. Asuka said it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think a yeah. battle droid said it. <laughs> 
Hey, everyone says I got a bad feeling about this. That that's another one too. It's, it's, it's always something coming and everything. I mean, to I, I, yeah. I mean, as Hitch was saying, the stakes that um I've I've seen you know throughout these past couple seasons so far has been definitely uh, a perspective change from what I'm used to seeing when it comes to like you know just certain cartoons and stuff. Uh, when you when you think about like past like stuff, old school like um uh, Thundercats or you know, Voltron or whatever, you get your, um, you know, you, you got, you, you have low stake stuff and you, the, you see I have the same repetitive um, from episode to episode. They got to defeat, you know, Mumra. They got to defeat, you know, um, Skeletor or whatever from He-Man and everything. It's the same thing going from each episode to episode. But when you're watching this, it's different things that, that go on in, in the Star Wars universe that they got to battle and fight. Um, and actually tackle because, you know, they're, they're put out in the field. They're given assignments and, you know, um, um, being told what to do. And like Hitch was saying, there's still an overall arc in the big scheme of things. You know, I mean, it's not it's, it's named Clone Wars for a reason. You know, right. um, you got the red shirts, which are the clones, but the red shirts actually have, um, you know, you're empathetic with them. You're actually, you know, um, taken to them because they give they did the writing. Um, does enough to give them personality so when those things happen when they get um you know killed i mean and, and it's and it's just so much much life being lost even though they're not really human but you really feel you know the lives lost and the decisions they got to make in war you know not and not just like your regular okay this is a kid's cartoon and everybody you know is gi joe you know uh, alive at the end you know, it's some really good stakes here. <laughs> right. And uh, as Ken said uh, previously, I mean, I, I just like the most in the series how the clones have the ability to take a little bit of damage, get hurt. I mean, you've seen some drug, you know, you know, in earlier seasons, you know, from war, from battle, like you would in real life. So, like, mm -hmm. um, even as Hitch said, like that Saving Private, you know, Ryan moment, I mean, it seems like a legit battle in war. As to when we tie in some of these things, you know, we get to stormtroopers at this, you know, at a later point. They just don't seem to be capable of taking damage and or doing anything other than being one shot. So I like the the fact that it's kind of, it's cunning how you, you see them, you know, in being, I guess, you know, bred or manufactured from a bounty hunter uh, just goes into the fact of, you know, how intelligent they are. So. You know, I can appreciate that as well as, you know, the, their kind of character development in there outside of the droids. I mean, the droids are going to obviously be the droids, but it seems like they, they flopped. The uh, stormtroopers became the droids and the, um, you know, droids became the, uh, the stormtroopers later on in Star well, Wars. I have many stupid theories about why, why that <laughs> is. Uh, many of them central. So now that we know in the very far future, in 55 years, they're using hypnotized people. I have a feeling that that makes them much worse when you're trying to make somebody like if you hypnotize somebody into shooting somebody else, right? There's, there's probably something that would prevent you from really doing that. Cause hypnosis is somewhat, you know, there's some sort of willingness in hypnosis. So the stormtroopers in the later era are, they don't want to shoot at Luke because they don't want to kill anybody. And the emperor is sort of making them through force su suggestion and through hypnosis. Right? So it's a totally different situation. Right. These clones are fighting. I mean, first of all, their primary enemy is robots. It's not even people, right? So they're not even killing right, specific. Right. Like they're not. They don't do a lot of killing. Right. Like they do some killing right, and they right. can do killing, but they're not killers, yeah. right? They're 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 sort of like they're trying to deactivate machine. Really, they're just a big IT team. And <laughs> they're a bunch of, they're yeah. a bunch of nerds. <laughs> I keep I keep expecting them to go unplug it and plug it back in, and then like you know what I mean, like. <laughs> send it a signal send it a signal uh uh so so that's that's some stuff i i know that um that we've all appreciated let's talk can we talk just for a second about uh about this relationship between anakin and ahsoka and anakin and padme and how those two relationships <laughs> are moving along a parallel track right they're they're going right yeah. along each right. other because yeah it's a love triangle i know ken yeah. you brought up the the vader moments and i and i and i right. like calling him that right? vader moments when he flashes that little you know fascist warlord when that comes out one every once in a while <laughs> in the uh in the war hero so my favorite one was when he looks at this uh this banking clan guy and he says like step away from her if you want to live and then 
he leaves him. He shanghais him. <laughs> and he leaves him there, <laughs> and like with the Techno Union guys, right? Or with the, or with the uh, Trade Federation. And he's like, "Well, you'll figure it out." And he just leaves him there. And he like strands him. And I thought that that, oh, yeah. that showing yeah. his like attachment to Padme, right? Like he is like like he is very attached to Padme. And then seeing it parallel later when he uh, when he. I mean, effectively tortures Poggle the Lesser for information, right? And doesn't really want to tell anyone else how he got it. So you know he was doing some pretty messed up stuff. Shady oh, stuff, right. Mm-hmm. Messed up stuff. So I, I appreciated those Vader moments, too, and how, you know, one thing I'm hyped up for now that I was not hyped up for is, you know, there's no way that Vader and Ahsoka didn't meet, right? There's no way that you're, you're that Star Wars. Do you, do you want me to? Spoil no, it? no, okay. No, if it's already no, happened, whatever. But you know no, what I'm saying? Like I'm no. all hyped up to see that. I'm hyped up to see that confrontation. I want to see it. So I mean, I want to see what he would do. I, I'm so curious now. Like I'm already so invested in this future. And wait, now Ken's gonna stop on that? me like I'm a cockroach over here. Is that is that the final season? Is that when we see? Probably. You, you see it a lot in um in uh, other series, Rebels as well. But it's it's. When you see it, it, it's a lot. I mean, it, it, it opens up. And like I said, as we get further into this, the detail they put in this stuff, I mean, it's just it's phenomenal. Um, yeah, I, I, I've read I, I've read things even before like this series and like the emotional, the emotional, the emotion that comes between when those when they do end up meeting is like really phenomenal. So I, like I said, when they when they say season three onwards is some really solid stuff. You know, if 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 we're liking what we're we're watching right now, I just can't wait till you know get to those points and stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, as Hitch was saying, the the how how Padme's relationship with uh, Anakin and um, Ahsoka's relationship parallel. You know, um, Ahsoka is really she 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 she's loving Anakin in a in a brother and sister type of way. You know, um, Anakin and Padme are, of course, they're, they're lovers and stuff, but they still have, I'm, I'm interested to see how, how, if, if Padme and Ahsoka are just going to just smack into each other somehow, you know, right. because it's, it's, it's sort of like coming, um, the way that, you know, the relationship is, and maybe, I don't, I don't know if it comes to this. And it, it doesn't really seem like, you know, Pat, Pat may, I mean, I'm sorry, Ahsoka's going to fall in love with Anakin or whatever. But it's, it's, it's a lot there. It's, it's a lot there, there, as they say. You know, I mean, you can't really be a Padawan and a female and have someone that you look up to like how Ahsoka looks up to Anakin without having some deepness of feelings towards him. Mm-hmm. You think Padme and Ahsoka are going to are duke it out? I don't know, but I mean, it's it's a you know. I, I want to see that. Pat Pat may Pat may she she's a woman man. She doesn't back down. She she was talking to Anakin, you know that that fourth episode, um, where you know um Anakin didn't want her to you know um you know be a spy, and she she found out. She I, I like the little interplay they you know the two had, and she turned around and was like, well, okay, since you don't want me to be a spy, this is what I want to do. You know, at first she didn't want to, um, cause she was asked before by the, like the Jedi council, right. Um, to be a spy. And she did, she wasn't really feeling that until Anakin just started running his mouth, you know, and just sort of like, um, the way he kept telling her not to do it was convincing her that she, it was a need to really do it, you know, especially when she, you know, he told her that there was a really, um, a, a, a big need for them to get some information and everything. Um, but yeah, she she's a she she's a strong female. I mean, they're they're really good at making strong female characters within this, um, with the way they do Ahsoka and the way they had the Padawans team up, you know, and um, you know, go through that thing. So I'm I'm loving that part. Yeah, I think it's really interesting as well as you guys and Ken brought this up previously about like kind of the love triangle that you kind of see that you know, it's that weird feeling with Ahsoka, Anakin, and Padme. I mean, Padme is what, you know, I'd say five or six years at least older than him. At least, yeah. Um, and then I would say Ahsoka is maybe three or four younger than Anakin. I guess in humanoid years. I don't know what our species were well, to, that's you one know, thing, isn't as it? far as whatever. Isn't that one thing that she's not... Right. Like, it's in her species, right? Which right. I don't know. Listen, I'm not trying to open up another can of worms here. I'm just... I don't know if it's like comp- right. it's like a USB 3.0 and a and a power right. cable is what I'm saying, not not anything else, right? That's all. 
That's all I mean, I'm yeah. Out. But it's you know, so it's like a it's like a double kind of double edged sword because it, in theory, that would be you know the ideal relationship, kind of like you know the the jock who has a girlfriend who plays volleyball, where you know you know this people who have similar interests, and it, you see that connection between the two. However. The interesting part that I'm really learning through these series is, and, and, and Ken has alluded to this as far as Star Wars being a family story, and it's about father and son by the time. Yeah. You're seeing in Anakin's development the lack of a father figure being pulled by the Jedi Council. And what I mean by that is they're sending this Jedi, who is the youngest Jedi to be a knight and have a Padawan, on all these missions without his master, and he's not even fully trained. So I'm starting to get the appreciation that Maybe the dark side was because he didn't have the guidance, but the guidance wasn't from Obi-Wan. It was the fact that the Jedi Council knew how powerful he was, so they would send him on these missions alone when he clearly still wasn't ready. So that's the really yeah. interesting part I picked up. That watching this, I mean, they kind of use him, as we would say, as a nuclear missile. I mean, this guy's full of unlimited power, and they know that. So they'd send him on these missions where they'd send two, three, four different Jedi Masters at one time. Yeah. But they know that he yeah. has the ability to do it, it so... Makes- they cover themselves though. They're like, oh, you know, they're like, oh, well, we're not going to do, you know, we're not going to let him because he's, uh, un- he's in- his training isn't complete. But yet, like you said, they're using him like the lethal weapon. So they're yeah, they're seeing the virus, on their yeah, enemies. I mean, you know, when we get to you know old other episodes, it's kind of like you see the downfall. I mean, mm-hmm. they write, you know, it's it's the whole council's reason why he turned That's it. Excellent, you know, one. excellent, it's really, yeah. It's That's a, an excellent so build up. I mean, if it comes to that point. Well, I mean, just look at history. I mean, it has to, right? I yeah. Mean, it's, well, what is it? has to. I mean, when I, when I'm tying this together, it's just it's kind of adding up now, as Ken said. I mean, just, you know how he is as a person. Well, what's one of the first? He's what's lost. one of the first things that Yoda says to his son? Right? He says, "Well, he says wars not make don't not make one great because he's being you know he's acting like he's not Yoda." But <laughs> what he means what he means is, you know, martial glory isn't the same thing as greatness, and. That's something he probably had to learn because there was such a long period of peace that presaged the Clone Wars. I mean, none of these guys knew what was going to happen when they sent, you know, Jedi and they changed their rule from sort of like the FBI, right, to like the elite military commandos, right? So that that's that's a real change, and and, and it's something to be said. Like, how where, what could Anakin have done and not have fallen to the dark side? What I think this show is showing us is that it was gradual. And it was what's what's pulling him to the dark side is his love for, you know, his love for Ahsoka, his love for Padme, his love for his family. And, you know, I really don't get a lot of like um, moonlighting vibes from (laughs) from Ahsoka and Anakin. Right. I don't get a lot of I'm not getting a lot of that. I feel like you could play it that way. And if they decide to later in the show, I'm not going to be like angry about it or whatever. But I'm feeling a lot more of this is like a it's a lot more brother and sister. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling sister, that a yeah. lot more. Um, and and part of it's because they're so similar. They're so headstrong, right? They don't say no. They just go and, do it. Yeah. And yeah. And look, what are we to think here at the end of episode eight? Well, look, Ahsoka should be trusting her feelings more because she's right. And why does Anakin say you need to trust your feelings? Because he's always right. He's just right after right after right. Almost as if when Anakin goes to a place, almost as if when Anakin goes to a place, Everybody there suddenly becomes incompetent for some reason. <laughs> I wonder. I wonder why that. Happened. I wonder why. <laughs> why is that? Hmm. Weirdly targeted. I don't know. Uh, but that. But this. This characterization. This long build up to Anakin. Maybe I feel, almost feel like this show is putting in the missing piece in Episode Three as I watch it. Right. Like the stakes in Episode Three felt to feel like they've been corrected now so that when I watch it again, I'll have the proper perspective and I will be able to appreciate, you know, like the, the cataclysmic ending because every single character that is in episode three has been in this show already all the way down to commander Cody, who's in episode three a lot. So hey, I can't wait to yeah. see that. I, I, uh, I know at some point, and if I was reading a chronological order, right, um, we're going to have to stop in the middle of one of these seasons and watch episode, um, episode three and then continue on with the rest of the season. You know, um, I forget where, but it's, it's going to be at some point. So it's, it's going to be really interesting the way that they tie it's that in the up. Middle. Ooh, now I'm excited. You guys got me all jazzed up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, 
like I said, it's just it's it's interesting. But you know, the things that you pull from these series is it's just it's wild. You know, you you have your Mace Windu's, your like he's saying your your Master Yoda who has a lot. A lot, a big influence on this that you don't see, you know, when we watch just a movie. So, I mean, just talking to you, DP, specifically, being a neutral, how do you feel about, like, the inclusion of a lot of people that, you know, if you were just a neutral watching it, you wouldn't know much of? I mean, Yoda has a lot to do with what's going on, and you don't see that in the movies traditionally. Well, I know um, by hearing you guys talk about a lot of these characters going to be in episode three, I feel like I'm getting, because I, I forget what, the only thing I remember about episode three is that he turned into Darth Vader at the end. <laughs> you know, that, and, and him and him and uh, Obi-Wan had a, a big fight, and that's basically it. In fairness, you know? dude, um, that's pretty much one, too. <laughs> like, I would probably, the Emperor takes over his three, right? right? That's one, two. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and um, okay. um, Padme had a, um, had the yeah. twins, you know. Um, that's that's basically that's that's all I remember. I don't remember, and and the thing is, I, I guess how can you have any type of um, character development with these characters when they all were in movies? You know, you have you would have had to have a series such as this and some right. some overall you know character arcs and everything in order to build these people up, which makes me as a casual viewer, someone just coming on to this. Uh, really making um, um, you know someone like us appreciate you know the uh, episodes as they go along. So I'm anticipating seeing this ep- you know this next episode once we you know you know um, trudge through this through these um, through this Clone Wars TV. Yeah, it, yeah, Revenge Revenge of the Sith. They really threw a whole lot into that, like all at once. I mean, you they yeah. dropped you right in the you know the beginning. It's awesome. it was already actually happening. the beginning of that so movie much rules. Already it's go- really good. I like that part. Yeah. I mean, it, it was so much going on in there in Yoda. So that's, that's something that I, I agree. Like you, we're seeing Yoda as the general, as the leader of this entire battle. And when he steps in, everyone's like, yes, master Yoda, what do we need to do? And he's, you know, send them up to the front and they go, like, yes, sir. And they go up and I mean, they in, in the movies, we don't really see that at all. We don't see Yoda being the consummate leader like that. Uh, so pretty cool. He's a, he's a powerful little dude, you yeah. know. He really, he really, and and you're seeing it. You're seeing it now in this animated series that you didn't really see in the in the movies. Well, at least in maybe in Revenge of the Sith a little bit because he was a little younger, right? He was okay. like, yeah, he was like 800 <laughs> years old. <laughs> so he had a little, he had a he had a little, he more, had a little more pep, pep in his step. Pep, pep in his step, right? You know, he threw the cane down. You know, <laughs> scene with with Dooku and the lightsaber. So he had a little more, he was spry, but, uh, in this, in the clone, the clone wars, the series, he's really like a teenager. I mean, in, in what we're seeing. So, uh, very, very, uh, I, and I'm a big Yoda fan too, but. Yeah. So I've got an interesting point for Hitch and Ken. So as we are watching in the, and you just brought it up about Yoda's development as a character, <clears throat> Uh, moving this, I guess, fast forward to his untimely, or I guess, yeah, his death. Do you think, and I was just kind of tying this together as I'm watching it, most um, Sith users use anger and hate to fuel them, and obviously, you know, your body decays from just the, I guess, pure rage. Do you think that all this on Yoda's plate, meaning this war, the fact that he was a Jedi Grandmaster, um, you know, kind of, now turned to a soldier, a general, you know, and then what happens after Order 66, do you think that sorrow was the real reason he died? Because the more I see it, hmm. I think it's his regret and sorrow which causes his untimely death at the end when it comes, you know. I don't know, it's, it's, it's kind of like a personal theory of mine, but it just, it kind of ties together, you know, somebody with a broken heart who could look back and say I could have did things differently, and as much as he held on his back, you know, for the whole council and all the Jedi, it go wrong so quickly and his memory be clouded. Yeah, I no. think I think that make that makes sense. I think he, I think it took a lot out of him, yeah. a lot of a lot of his energy, a lot of his what what made him who he was, and maybe he was, maybe he was just exasperated, like like Luke's driving him crazy. He's trying to train this kid, and he's running right. off on his own thing and coming back and running off. I mean, there's there's got to be some turmoil there too. I mean, was right. Yoda really the best teacher? You know who knows, right. and maybe he felt like he had he had failed. But I mean, it also maybe the end of his life cycle, because right. 
Jedi seems to know when their time is up. Like you yeah. just know, you know, this is the moment that I need to pass on and they don't actually die. They become one with the force. So right. Obi-Wan Kenobi is not dead. Qui-Gon's not dead. Uh, and I don't think Yoda is dead. Obviously he comes back in, in our favorite, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it happened. <clears throat> he came back. He came back, and he was just like he was in the Empire. He's like st- saucy and you know witty comebacks, and you know spoke a weird language, put his adjectives in front of his verbs and everything. <laughs> so, so, but I mean, I think, but I think you have a good point, Team Mitch. It uh, you know could be a lot of sorrow from the battle and and just been being worn out. That makes sense. Right. Yeah, he's an old soldier, old veteran, you know. Yeah. You know, and at that point, you know, you have to cut yourself off from the force, obviously, after Order 66 when we get into it. I mean, it's just, you're like a, you know, walking target. I mean, they, they can sense, you know, force sensitive. So it makes sense that you, you cut yourself off from the force so long that, you know. Is it hiding? As we I've see. always wondered about that about Dagobah because, you know, Yoda obviously feels that, I feel like Yoda does not feel like he could beat the Emperor and certainly doesn't feel like he could get to the Emperor and then beat the Emperor. And that is why Yoda leaves, I think. Uh, that's why he hides in Dagobah, because he can't, like... He knows that yeah. if he takes the direct military route, he'll fail because he tried it, right? He knows that right. this military is built in a certain way so that it no longer needs the Jedi to be sufficient, which is which is interesting. It's interesting to think of the Empire as sort of like a like a secular government, you know, and the Jedi are sort of like the religious, the religious end of, um, they're like mon- a monastery almost, right? Like they're kind of a religious order. Right. So it's interesting to think of yeah. Yoda, you know, as changing his focus from fighting directly because, you know, he uses his lightsaber in episode two. He's doing all this stuff, you know, with these, with the clones and all these missions in this series. And when we get to him again, to, to, to call back to that scene in Empire, in, uh, Empire Strikes Back, he says wars not don't make one great. He says that being a great warrior, being a powerful Jedi, like it's not the way to win. And he tells Luke that. He says, "Don't go. Don't don't mess up your training because you don't win if you go fight them directly. You have to win. You only win and how does Luke win at the end, right? He doesn't fight." So so there's mm-hmm. this like there's this dynamic of, you know, I don't want to say violent resistance because they re- they, you know, they seem to uh, represent the legitimate government of the galaxy right so it's not like a violent resistance but this idea that direct confrontation is not as profitable as negotiation as you know um these non-violent resistance pathways because what's obi-wan doing in episode four he says if you strike me down i'll become i'll become more powerful than you can imagine and what is the point of non-violent resistance if you're talking about gandhi if you're talking about Martin Luther King Jr. The point is, when the state acts with violence against somebody who doesn't merit it, it creates resistance against the state just from the state's action. That's the whole point of nonviolent yes. resistance. And so, what Yoda is teaching Luke, and what Yoda has decided is that continued fighting isn't not just productive, but it is, you know, unbecoming of of a Jedi. It leads to the dark side on its own. <sighs> It makes everything that we're watching here, it doesn't make a lot of sense at that right. point. But it actually makes so much sense if you if 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 you were really talking about. I mean, this is like you know real war and um, consequences and you yeah. know um, stuff like lessons. You know, the, the thing about Star Wars is always about lessons being learned and how you know um, you can take some real life stuff. And actually apply it, and you may learn some lessons. You may learn, you you may not learn, but is all is always a long game to that. Yeah, and this was the first. So the Clone Wars, this was the first actual battle that the Republic had been involved in, because they had relied on the Jedi to keep the peace, and they didn't. They were they were negotiated. They you know they back and forth. They compromised a lot. So the Republic was built on a lot of compromising situations and and decisions. Now, all of a sudden, now they're faced, well, all right, we have to fight now because (laughs) our very way of life is being threatened, just threatened, strangled. The Trade Federation is taking all of our resources away. They are making people not want to trade with us and not want to, you know, 
export and import products that are you know being you know built in the republic so now they actually have to fight so this is their first foray foray into a bat battle yeah. right and they're not yeah. equipped for it yeah no they're not equipped right. for it they had an idea uh to build this clone army and i like how yoda is still like oh i never i didn't know anything about that <laughs> but i'll but i'll use it i'll use it right now bring it yeah. uh, come on it anyway <laughs> oh that rifle over there looks pretty cool. Let me let me put some ammo in and see yeah. what it does. <laughs> but so maybe he has a lot of regret in himself, and, and he's conflicted because now he's saying wars don't make one great. Yes, they do. They absolutely <laughs> do. I mean, this was a this was a this was their their last ditch effort to save their existence, and it was a great war. And there's a lot of heroes that came out of the war. But he's now well, conflicted. On a macro level, it's like with those those little lemurs and stuff. <laughs> like, um, you know, they they had to choose to do something. You know, right. either sit there or fight. You or know, fight. fight and defend their way. I mean, that's on a macro level of everything that's going on here with the whole complication and the politics and stuff. But um, it's a great way to see. The, the the lessons just being learned. I mean, you get the little lessons that they teach you or that they show you at the beginning of the episode, you know, fear is a disease and stuff. And, mm -hmm. you know, um, just a little sense that they have at the beginning. I'm, I'm sitting up here just thinking, too, how many how many episodes do they have to come up with, you know, all these sense and everything, you know, but it's 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 a million lessons out there to be learned in life. Mm -hmm. So, um yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's the thing I'm learning as a casual viewer coming into the Star Wars thing. It's not just it's 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 not just um, just about the people. It's about the lessons that um, you have to learn at some point in, in your um, in your existence. Let's think right. about Yoda as an 800 year old being who can see the future. Generally, probably for 800 years, mm -hmm. right? He can see exactly what's going to happen. And all of a sudden, he can't see anything. And when he's robbed of that, he makes a lot of mistakes. A lot of them. And then he tells Luke, you can't see the future. Because the future is always in motion. But we see him in episode two saying, hmm, take me here. Hmm, take me there. He's using his foresight there. So there's something to being hoodwinked by the, the president of the galactic you know, government, right? The chancellor. And and not realizing while you are this being who's training, you know, these the most ultimate power beings who can see the future, can see everything and right under your nose, the most powerful, like political actor has is simultaneously the most powerful force user. And you have no idea. I mean, that's got to be <laughs> a reality check for any being. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. And look, just like everybody yeah. else, as they get older. Yoda is realizing that he was a lot stupider when he was younger. <laughs> a lot stupider. Yeah. I was a lot stupider when I was younger. <laughs> to put yeah. that on the record. You, you, it, it was a whole bunch of lessons that were put right into your face, but you know, and the lessons are already there and they're 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 there in the past, or they're in the, the present and they're in the future. You know, so, uh, it's just some people take so long to to realize the lessons some people you know grant you know get them at the beginning some people get it in the middle some people get it at the very end you know um and realize that okay i could have done better when i was younger you know i guess in hindsight you know hindsight is always 2020 but um but if you're that powerful and like you know hitch was saying you know and you got something right under your nose that is sort of like just working against you it has to sort of bring that hubris you know in you down you know a bit once you yeah. just realize that, wow, you know, I, I I knew all this, and all of you know, then then it's pretty much I couldn't figure this out. How stupid can I really be, you know, or how powerful can I really be? And why, and, you, you know, know yeah. somebody's hiding all this stuff with Anakin from him because he has no idea. Like huh? Anakin's doing all this stuff right under the council's nose, and they're not getting it. Like something's going on where like he is committing like murder he's committing those 30 murders in the first in the episode two right and he is you know torturing prisoners for information in a dire situation right and this would have been you know when i was in school right after 9 11 this would have been the thing we would have used right this would have been the oh well if it was a terrorist attack would you torture them to get the information this was the the en vogue 
philosophical question that was being asked at the time. And so, you know, Anakin's taking these steps uh, in that direction. And again, the council's totally blind to that. So it's not just <laughs> the Palpatine stuff. And if it isn't just the Palpatine stuff, if, if he's not interceding here to, to shield, you know, Anakin from the consequences of his actions, right? Allowing him to further his you know, uh, attachment to Padme without being thrown out of the order, right? To continue to explore the limits of his force potential against this, like, dummy army that can't feel that he can just maul. He can destroy over and over and over again and continue to compound his force ability, sort of like a Saiyan from Dragon Ball Z getting injured and getting stronger and stronger and stronger the more he fights. You know, it, it, Palpatine has to be interceding somewhere here or else... The Jedi Council is even blinder than than they think they are, and they they're pretty blind. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's a big point. I mean, I I really you know when you say that it really kind of hits home, and we discussed it. I mean, the Council were, were basically you know the corporation, the executives who haven't felt with the frontline employees. You know, they're they have to go to war now. They're not used to this, like you're saying. Yeah. Yoda's not used to being in a battle. Yeah, I don't remember yeah. the last time you know they yeah. had a trial or training. You know, the only one that I would consider, maybe the two that I would consider would be maybe XR Kuhn and Mace Windu that are at least proficient enough to battle at this current point. So, you know, you figure that. If, and if, then... if they ever, ever ever got on the field, you know. Right, the exactly. That they never got on the phone to actually talk to these customers <laughs> and actually right. felt the one-two, you know, on the back and forth with. <laughs> right. So it kind of gives me, like you're saying, those vibes of, like, Maybe they are that, you know, and then the community, like we talk about communication. I mean, this is going on with Anakin. You're telling me that, uh, you know, Yoda will be the only one that sense when this happened. I mean, he sensed the, the anger in episode two, but yet when this war started happening directly after the, the you know, the genocide, um, dealing with his mother, that all of a sudden they're all blind and it, this war is taking his eye off of, you know, the high, the most high profile Padawan. It's like somebody taking an alpha nuke, like. How do you let your strongest weapon slip under your eyes? I mean, that's your strongest weapon. So, yeah, that, that's, you know, the interesting part is the, the Jedi Council is how, I guess, inept they really were. And we and they and we didn't really see much of that in really any of the movies. And no. even in the series, it's a little like there'll be a quick flash. You'll see Chancellor Palpatine in his room, in his, you know, with the chair. He's got the chair, mm -hmm. which... Uh, and he's talking to a couple of senators and there's a little bit of banter back and forth, but then they're back to the mission. You know, it so seems like they're pretty much in control. I mean, that so they're far. Call, yeah, they're calling the shots. You know, really, the buck stops there. Whatever is happening out in the battlefield, Palpatine has his hand in it, which he does. Yeah. Ultimately, he does because he's controlling Dooku in, behind the scenes. Palpatine's so, playing chess against himself. He's playing, playing chess again. He's playing checkers against himself because <laughs> no, nobody really wins. Yeah. There's not a really prize. No need to complicate here. it. You're just, right. Let's not get silly. He was just why you know why even no, bother playing no, chess both ways? Just checkers. It's easy enough. It's it just checkers with like more pieces and more rules. So you want to have just less less of that. And it, 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 you don't need all that. But it's but there, maybe we'll see more of the the council actually counseling and trying to figure stuff out because things are going to start to you know hit the fan there is yeah. a really yeah. there's an interesting yeah. like, um really. there's an interesting reading of the clone wars here that's sort of marxist in in its origin and it's the that the the, the separatists are the, are the forces of capital and industry and the republic are the forces of like uh, representative government and the jedi are sort the jedi and the senate are sort of the uh, what happens when you have an incompetent government or a government that isn't a legislature that can't legislate correctly and an executive that isn't suited for for the task at hand and there's an idea in politics generally that democracies can't really survive long-term war so like if, if a world war ii for instance would have gone on for 20 years instead of five years that you would have seen the united states and great britain the governments would have changed forms to continue the war effort is sort of the idea there right and that is sort of what happens here in star wars we have a new unitary government that springs up and it's the people that win right and that, and that is that's what's so weird about the empire and it's what's so interesting if you study like uh, the russian revolution for instance uh the, the side that wins is the side that is nominally on the people's side right that's the side that wins the russian yeah. revolution that's the side that wins the clone wars and capital is what is vanquished here 
But like in any situation, capital isn't really vanquished. It is subsumed by the state, right? And that's why you get some of the blending of, of the separatist stuff and the separatist like, um, well, certainly the separatist arms manufacturing capacity is something the empire inherits. <laughs> that's something they get. Mm -hmm. So there's an interesting reading here where what's happening is sort of like a... Um, it's sort of like a, a, a Marxist counter-revolution, right? It's a reaction to the Republic preventing profit from being the number one consideration. So it, it, that's something that I've been thinking as we watch this stuff that I'm sure nobody cares about. But it's something I've been thinking. <laughs> oh, it's, 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 it's pretty, that's pretty deep, you know? I need a hobby, uh, I'm, guys. I'm... I need to get a podcast <laughs> or something where I could talk about this stuff. Is what that what I do? I'm 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 pretty sure it's something floating in your brain somewhere. <laughs> you know, let's I get do it this going. Show because my wife's so sick and tired of me talking about this stuff. Her, she's like, I don't care. She's like, save it. She used to just be like, save it for the show, but now it's not as me. <laughs> well, I I will say these next because uh, I mean I think there is it's up to twenty two. So how do you want to break this up for this next? You want to do another eight and then like the final five or whatever or do you want to you know do how it's cut uh, out better than me or I, better than us is there a good like cut yeah, where there's like I mean, a second half a second third or is it all just the rest until the end and we just need to do it i i, I mean i'll tell you right now that it does this if we do it in eight i mean it's it, it turns out pretty quick it, it, it's a lot of a lot of content it's, it's fun but yeah i think eight would be another good place to start so we go okay. from i guess nine to sixteen 16 and, yeah and that was it said uh, what was the name of it grievous returns or grievous uh, uh, yeah Gre I'm, I'm, grievous I'm, I'm going to see that next one, I believe, yeah. as soon as we stop i'm going to go see that grievous i know episode. right yeah it, <laughs> i almost feel like he's he, i feel like you did the reading ahead i, I feel trying. like i should be angry right. like angry at you for not following the lesson because I, I was going to go to bed but um ken wants me to watch that grievous episode yeah you gotta you gotta why because he's back you know he's so. back I oh, man. <laughs> oh man! Can't wait to see him in the um in, in the Sif in Revenge of the Sif. So, yeah. Oh yeah, uh, I can't believe that you didn't. You, I mean, I, I don't remember. I don't remember. It, the last time I seen that movie was back in the 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 the, the aughts. You know, back whenever it came out. You know, back I've, I've COVID. Seen it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. Aww. Yeah, we can do uh yeah, nine to sixteen would be a good place to we'll uh, reconvene again for uh, part two for everybody out there listening as well. Um, so we'll, we'll cover those episodes as well there. Um, there's a lot of good stuff in there. Uh, bring some characters back, get some more development, and uh, uh, like I said, you a couple a, a couple of different things you'll see in this that are kind of eh, it ties into uh, this current day, you know, Star Wars. So like I said, the the way that they're I guess creating this universe and expanding it to to fit together to be so mesh. I mean, it's when you see these this next set, it'll really start bringing things from the Mandalorian in. You know, this, you know, things from the prequel trilogy to the latest sequel trilogy um, to the original trilogy. I mean, it's just this. And, and like I said, we're only in the beginning of season two, and it's just the writing of this stuff. It's really deep. I mean, it's. When I watch this, the more and more it's like when I read a graphic novel. You know, I've always been a fan of watching the Star Wars episode seven, even eight and nine, and then I read the graphic novels because the graphic novels have that much more content. But if you were to like read a graphic novel, it's like you're closing your eyes and this is what you're visualizing, which I can appreciate. So, um, yeah. Any final thoughts, you guys, this week before we um, we toss it, uh, you know, over to any questions of the week or any feedback we got. Make Palpatine coming back make sense. I, I know this, this series doesn't do that, but, you know. Um, it seems like it could, it could go there, but I, I know it's not. But. So, like, so if this is a, an original series that needed fleshed out so they did a prequel trilogy, they needed fleshed out so they did a cartoon series, they needed fleshed out so they did a sequel trilogy, they, they needed they, fleshed they, out they, so they did The Mandalorian. They, they, That's... they, they, yeah, 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 yeah. They, they, they put things, they create things far into the future and then make somebody do all the work to clean up, you know, to, to, they have a great, Filoni is a really great, great janitor, I swear to God. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Well, you, 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 you,
whole thing. Yeah. And really, that really brought it all together. Once there's once there's a Lego, <laughs> once there's a Lego set that you, that's really the that's that's where you know you've made it. Like once yeah. there's a Carbonite Bounty BS Lego oh, set wow. <laughs> with us as little little characters yeah. and you know us yeah. in our look little at my, chairs. Look how insane my set would be. Look at all this crap. I have back here. They'd be the tiny little pieces, you know. It'd be like one of the my set would be the one you'd step on and curse in the middle of the night. And DP would have his, have his uh, vodka <laughs> bottle or whatever that is, <laughs> and and then you know you've made it, like you've really arrived, you know. Exactly. That's my thoughts. Oh man. Oh. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that, you saying tying in the Palpatine. I mean, they're trying, but it just I don't know. It's far fetched. Hey, that's just come up with another series. If if that's what they got to do, come up with a two season arc series or something to, to uh, explain. Uh, things. Yeah, the, the, you got to think that the problem is the only characters. Yeah, it would work if they do the Luke Skywalker series. That's the one everybody wants. That's the one that they're not announcing. One. I, I'm guessing or hoping they'll do it over the next two years. Got, it's just they're going to own this for. That they want to do. Disney's going to own Star Wars for 50 years, and you know, deep fakes oh, yeah. are only going to get yeah, better. Yeah, we'll get a Luke series. We'll get a Luke series someday. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, any feedback on the, um, you know, on our social platforms before, uh, before we kind of head out here, guys? Anything any, in, of importance you guys want to bring up? Thomas was just uh, our, our all-star listener and then our whole audience. Uh, Thomas was just in our uh, our chat, and he is explaining that uh, Mace Windu is much weaker in the Force than Yoda. And in the, um, in the Clone Wars book, the Mace Windu book, he says <laughs> Yoda would probably just pick up a train and throw it and mutter something about the Force being his ally. And uh, <laughs> that's just pretty funny. <laughs> so thank you so much <laughs> for commenting there, yeah, right. uh, and, and, and generally sense. for keeping us, uh, you know, in the lanes. Right? Thank you so much for that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've I've never thought of Mace Window being one strong with the Force. He's he's been the he was the arms. You know, the he was a he was a general as far as lightsaber. I'm pretty sure he was known as the most proficient lightsaber or saberist, if you want to call it that. But uh, yeah, he was good with the sword. I'm. As far as anything else, I mean, he was, he was a, the tough dad. He was stubborn, you know. He's, you yeah. couldn't talk to him. You, know? you couldn't talk to him at all. It was his way or no way. And he got himself killed. Mm -hmm. He went out with a bang. <laughs> we, we, we don't know. We don't know that for he sure. He got himself yet. thrown out a window. Oh, okay. This is Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, he got himself thrown out a window. So we'll, I'm not. I'm holding out that he's still alive. I'm okay. holding out. Okay. There's plenty okay. to fill in, guys. What, plenty to fill in. Jedi, Jedi bounce. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if Jedi bounced <laughs> because I'm I'm pretty sure in that movie also wasn't Anakin thrown out a speeder and he flew way farther than Episode that down two. to the ground and caught a Episode car. Two, he does yes. that. Um, he's jumping out. Of, he's jumping yeah. out of like uh, spaceship spaceships and going into reentry in this series. So I figure, yeah. I mean, unless he's unless he's zapped. When he when 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 Anakin could go through battlefields, <laughs> just not getting you know just you know just stuff bouncing. I mean, ah. That he, Anakin's a man. That I plot swear. armor. He's is a something. man. <laughs> the plot armor is uh, is is phenomenal. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but once again, guys, uh, another great stream, another great episode. Thank you, Thomas, and everybody out there listening to us. Um, whether you're going to catch us on a podcast later point and or watching live on Facebook or YouTube, really appreciate everything you guys are keeping up with us. Um, but yeah, we're going to dive into part two here, uh, going into next week. Uh, please, like I said, interact with us. We'll upload some stuff on our socials as well, as far as questions and just interactive banner between you guys. So keep interacting us, um, through that as well, which we appreciate and keep smashing that like subscribe and, um, you know, giving us those five star ratings that we really appreciate it. Um, but other than that, guys, once again, we appreciate you and I look forward to talking to you guys next week for our, uh, season two, uh, I guess, Group two, or um, you know, part two, part two, part two of this, you know, Clone War series. So until then, guys, thank you, and uh, this is the way. This is this the way. way. Nerdcyclopedia.